What is up guys, welcome back to Rip City Rundown and in this video we are ranking every NBA arena from worst to best. I will mostly be ranking these off quality, uniqueness, and location, and not so much the fan base and team success. However, factors like fan base and team success may alter the list slightly, but those types of things are not the main focus in these rankings. Okay guys, let's get started. For the worst stadium, we got the Target Center where the Minnesota Timberwolves play. Yeah, we in Minnesota now. That is right, Kat, we are in Minnesota and honestly, uh, the, your stadium is washed. Simple as can be. This place was open in 1990. The layout is pretty ugly. And it doesn't help that they struggle to fill seats given how trash the T-Wolves have been in recent years. I don't know what else to say, guys. I mean, this stadium is on the bottom of almost every NBA ranking list. And I, I feel like the dark blue is just the cherry on top, just giving it a depressing kind of vibe. For the second worst NBA stadium, we got Smoothie King Center. This is where the New Orleans Pelicans play. I think that's how I pronounce it. Um, built in 1999. It's a very old stadium. Well, not very old, but let's be honest, it looks older than that by looking at the inside and outside of the arena. It is the smallest NBA arena. The capacity is in the 17,000 range. And even with it being that small, they can still not find a way to fill their seats thanks to the Pelicans being a trash team. At number 27, we have Gamebridge Fieldhouse Stadium. This is where the Indiana Pacers play. This stadium was also built in 1999. Might be ready for some renovations here, but... um. I mean, this stadium isn't even that bad. It's just that its competition is so hard. I mean, if this is the third worst stadium, that shows how good NBA arenas are, unlike NFL arenas, which have to play in baseball stadiums sometimes. At number 26, we have Capital One Arena, where the Washington Wizards play. Similar to the Indiana Stadium, just a mediocre stadium with a pretty bad team, pretty bad fan base, so that's why it goes this low. Also, the exterior to the stadium is pretty ugly, in my opinion. At number 25, we have State Farm Arena. This is where the Atlanta Hawks play. Not much to say, just a mediocre stadium with a pretty trash team, but hopefully Trae Young can turn the franchise around. I really like their court design though, I will say that. The outside's pretty nice, but look at that, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. What a beast, right next to this hunk of junk. Yikes. Welcome to Memphis, Tennessee for number 24. Nothing really bad to say about this stadium. It's kind of old though, team hasn't been successful, it's underwhelming. The gray kind of is depressing, I understand it's the team colors, but they could have done better. The stadium just reminds me of the city of Memphis itself. Speaking of, let's get out of here before we get shot. Number 23, Wells Fargo Center. Not much to say about it. Pretty old, mediocre stadium. Doesn't have much pop to it. Built in 1996. Looks like they're playing the Heat game four in this picture. I believe Philadelphia won that game. But anyway, I mean, it's similar to the stadiums before this one. But, you know, that deciding factor is just the fan base, which Philly rules. Number 22, Vivint Arena. I assume that's how you pronounce it. This is where the Utah Jazz play. Built in 1991. I feel like this stadium outperforms other stadiums built in the 90s. I mean, look at that awesome Jumotron. Not sure if that was there when it was built in the 90s. Unfortunately, the outside looks like Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert's chemistry. Trash. At number 21, we got Footprint Center. Home to the Phoenix Suns. Uh, stadium's kind of old, built in 1992. I don't like those purple seats. They don't really work for me, but anyway, the outside's kind of nice. We got some palm trees, but yeah, pretty old. We need we need an upgrade here in Phoenix. We need an upgrade. Coming at number 20, we got Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Now, this is where the Cavs play. You know, LeBron James had a lot of years here, but let's be honest. One of the worst name changes to a stadium ever. I mean, come on, just quick and loans. Just, just rolls off the tongue beautifully. Number 19, Ball Arena. Um, pretty old, but no, we're actually getting to some pretty good stadiums now. Now that we're in the top 20, also another garbage name change. I mean, Ball Arena, come on, Pepsi Center, classic. At number 18, we got Toyo Center, built in 2003, where the Houston Rockets play. Just a pretty average stadium in the middle of the pack. Not much to say about it. For number 17, we got Spectrum Center, where the Hornets play. As you can see, as we're moving up in the list... These stadiums are getting a little bit newer year by year. This one being built in 2005. Number 16, that's right, we're getting low, guys. We got AT&T Stadium, or AT&T Center, I should say, where the San Antonio Spurs play. Um, the stadium actually has a bat problem. Many times in NBA games, bats have been flying around in the arena. Very interesting. At number 15, we got Barclays Center. Now, this one might come to a surprise for some people. It was built in 2012. It's a pretty new stadium, but it has kind of been a letdown since it has opened. 
Also, the Nets have sucked as a franchise, and they can't even sell tickets during playoff games. Playoff games. But it's still not a bad stadium. And look at that outside. I mean, that that saves it from being a top 20 spot. That is really nice. At number 14, we've got Scotiabank Arena. Whew, what a name. Um, location of this stadium is phenomenal. In downtown Toronto, right on the bay, right next to CN Tower, one of the tallest buildings in North America. And yeah, this stadium does well sneaking into the top half, especially being a stadium built in the 90s. Also built in the 90s, same year actually, FTX Arena located in Miami. I'm going to say this one has a slightly better location though because it's located right in the Miami Bay, right next to downtown Miami, the skyscrapers, but just one bridge length to Miami Beach. Alright, number 12, United Center. Um, this one's kind of a classic stadium, built in 1994, Chicago Bulls play here. Yes, Michael Jordan was in my head when we're making this ranking system but i mean it's still a really nice stadium i mean it's classic and it is the biggest nba stadium with a capacity of 23,500. just missing out in the top 10 we have paycom center in downtown okc um yes i know i'm not supposed to put the fans and team success into perspective but obviously the thunder have been super successful and there is a vibe at this stadium there is a vibe but even if okc franchise was trash this is still a really nice stadium nevertheless and i love the outside design this beautiful circular design entering the top 10 we got american airlines center built in 2001 where the dallas mavericks play Despite the stadium's kind of old, everyone seems to love it. It's one of the most highly rated stadiums in the NBA. And obviously, Dallas has great fans and has been a successful team since the stadium has opened. At number 9, we got Moda Center, home of the Portland Trailblazers. Yes, we are Rip City Rundown, so there might be some bias in this one. But Moda Center is always ranked in the top 10 and really high on so many NBA arena tier lists, ranking lists. I mean, it's crazy. The stadium has aged really well, despite being nearly 30 years old, and the location of the stadium is beautiful in downtown Portland, right on the Willamette River, perfect spot. At number 8, we got Amway Center, I assume that's how you pronounce it, home of the Orlando Magic. The stadium is kind of a jewel, it's beautiful, it's new, built in 2010, it is a gorgeous stadium, and it might have been a little higher on the list if the Magic weren't a poverty franchise, but they are, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is still a very awesome stadium. At number 7, we have Crypto.com Arena. No, this is not a top 5 stadium. This stadium is extremely overrated. I could have easily put it outside of the top 10, but I didn't. It's still a pretty cool stadium. Pretty modern, being built in 1999, and it is in the thick of Los Angeles, surrounded by some pretty cool buildings. And obviously, the history and Kobe Bryant getting 5 rings here puts the stadium up a tiny bit, but not much. It's pretty overrated, but it's still a pretty good stadium. Number six, Little Caesars Arena. Yes, this is better than Staples Center. Shows how history does not mean everything when you look at the stadiums. Pistons are absolutely poverty the last 10 years, but that doesn't mean the stadium isn't cool. The stadium is brand new, built in 2017. One of the most modern, uniquely designed, beautiful NBA stadiums in this era. And here's what the outside, oh, there it's gone because it's brand new. The street view wasn't taken. There it is. What a beautiful stadium. After the top five, we have Gold One Center, home of the Sacramento Kings. This stadium is a beautiful, new, unique masterpiece built in 2016. It just sucks how all these garbage teams get these stadiums. Like, can we build these stadiums for good teams? So far, the stadium has hosted a team that has never tanked, but has never made the playoffs. Like, what the actual heck? How is that even possible? At number four, we got Madison Square Garden. I kind of went old head mode on this one, putting the oldest stadium in the top five. But I had to. It's so historic. It's so classic. Even though the Knicks are trash, this stadium is beautiful, and it is in the heart of Manhattan, right next to Times Square, one of the best locations the stadium could be in. At number three, we got TD Garden, home of the Boston Celtics. I went absolutely old head mode putting this one in the top five, but I did. It's historic. Let's move on to number two. Taking the silver, we have Pfizer Forum. I assume that's how you pronounce it, home of the Milwaukee Bucks. This stadium is modern and just a piece of art to look at. I mean, just look at that. I think the stadium is similar in terms of looks to the Kings Stadium and Pistons, so I went along with the team success and fan base to bump it up over those stadiums. And now let's move on to number one. For the best NBA stadium, we have Chase Center, home of the Golden State Warriors. This stadium is perfect in every category. It's breathtaking to look at and makes every other NBA stadium look washed. The location is stunning right along the San Francisco Bay in downtown San Fran. 
And for the cherry on top, it has one of the best fans selling out every game, having the highest ticket prices, and having one of the most successful teams in today's game. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you guys comment on things you disagree with. Please torch me in the comments and maybe I will reply. And make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content.